The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. While the crowd was pressing in on Jesus and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. He saw two boats there alongside the lake. The fishermen had disembarked and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, he asked him to put out a short distance from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. After he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and lower your nets for a catch. Simon said in reply, Master, we have worked hard all night and have caught nothing, but at your command, I will lower the nets. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their nets were tearing. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come to help them. They came and filled both boats so that the boats were in danger of sinking. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus and said, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For astonishment at the catch of fish they had made seized him and all those with him. And likewise, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners of Simon. Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. When they brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'm glad to see so many students and their families here today. I know that you all are learning in our CFF classes about our Lord Jesus. And it's so good that you make a part of your life reserved, special to welcome in our Lord Jesus. And so I know that in your lives, in your family lives, you've got a lot of organization. I'm sure your parents have things organized. You know that, you know, here is when we go to school and do our homework. And here's when we're with our family. And here is when we take care of the house and are with the neighbors. And here is when we pray and go to CFF and go to Mass. And it's all nicely arranged. But what if one of those things decided to, in a sense, break out of that box you had allotted for? That is, what if Jesus showed up and asked you to make more time for him than you had given? He wanted more. Now, that would be pretty unusual, right? But that's exactly what happened to St. Peter in our gospel reading and actually to the other two men we hear about today, the prophet Isaiah back in 733 B.C., as well as St. Paul. All of them in some way today are telling us about their experience of Jesus showing up and changing their lives. So consider, we heard St. Peter was there at work. Now I'm gonna ask some questions to you, but it won't work for you to actually answer me. But if you know the answer, you know, be thinking of this and maybe just whisper it to your parents or something as I'm asking. So Peter was at work, right? But he wasn't in an office, where was he? Because what kind of work did he do? Well, as we hear, he was in his boat because he was a fisherman. So he was in his work vehicle because this boat was the boat that he would use every night with his partners to go out on the Sea of Galilee and to fish using nets. Now, I bet a bunch of you have gone fishing, but it's not your work, at least not the kids here. And you probably did it with a fishing pole in the middle of the day. And if you didn't catch anything, eh, didn't matter too much, right? It was just for fun. Not for these guys. These men, that was their work. They needed to catch fish. And so they did it in a much more serious way. They did it at night because that was the best time to do it. They used nets so they could catch a lot of fish. Of course, some nights they didn't catch anything, but they had to catch fish a lot of nights, otherwise they would be in big trouble as far as actually having food and money for their families. So this particular night, they hadn't caught anything. It was one of those nights that it hadn't gone very well. But there they were, mending their nets. So there they are, their work vehicle, their work tools, getting ready to end their work day, which for them was the night. Now, Peter had seen Jesus before. Probably the first time was when Andrew, his brother, introduced Peter to him. 
And then the chapter right before this, we hear that Jesus went to Simon Peter's home and healed his mother-in-law of a little sickness that she had. So Peter knew him a little bit. But on this day, Jesus did something unexpected. Jesus was there nearby teaching the people, and then he went and he got into Simon's boat. Imagine if you were on your way to school in a car, and Jesus walked up and got into your car. Wait, what? What, what are you doing here? That's not what you would expect him to be. But that's what Jesus did for Simon Peter. He walked up, got into his boat, into his work vehicle, and he had something unusual to ask him. He said, here, pull the boat away from the shore. I'm going to use it to speak to the people. Because there's such a big crowd, Jesus had an idea. You know, he's going to be in the boat a little ways offshore. And there's this nice area where the, cor the shoreline of the Sea of Galilee curves just right, curves around, so he could be there in the boat, and the people, and nobody would be too crowded. Everybody could hear him. He was using Peter's boat in a way it had never been used before. It had never been used to preach the word of God to people on the shore. Huh, unusual. Okay, so Simon Peter let him do it. Then when he was done, then he had another request for him. Do you remember what he asked him to do? He didn't say, take me back to the shore. He said, okay, go to the deep water, and the nets you've been cleaning, put them back down into the water to catch fish. And Simon Peter, it seems, was thinking in his mind, really? This does not sound like a good idea. Come on. I know, everybody knows, night's the time to catch fish, not during the day, at least on the Sea of Galilee. And maybe he said, well, that, that part of the, that isn't the best place to fish anyway. Like, this seems really strange. But he said, okay, Lord, we'll do it. We'll do what you say. Now, I wonder if inside he was thinking, this is not going to work out. And when it doesn't work out, I'm going to say to Jesus, well, Jesus, ha ha, you're really good at preaching the word of God, but you better leave the fishing to me because I'm the fishing expert, and you're not such a fishing expert. Maybe he had that in mind, it's like, I'm, well, I'll just say that, you know, when it doesn't work out. Except, did it work out? It did. They didn't catch one fish, they didn't catch a few fish. They caught so many fish, the nets were beginning to tear. Strong nets, right? Starting to begin to tear. I said, okay, we've got to load these in the boats. They started loading the books. Boats, imagine a boat. It's now become completely piled up with fish, full of fish. So it's almost going to sink. It's so heavy with all those fish. That's how it worked out. Wow. Jesus got into Peter's boat, and then he did something extraordinary. Now, you and I know that Jesus is true God and true man. Peter didn't know that. Peter, you know, here was this man, but, but he certainly knew at that moment Wow, this one is somebody special. Because this is a miracle that just happened. So clearly, this man has some kind of really close connection to God. He has power. Wow. That's the first thing. Jesus got into Peter's boat, and that's what happened. Now, as a result of this, as a result of, of realizing that Peter, Peter realizing that he was in the presence of someone that close to God and that powerful, it's like he went into a bright light and suddenly, in that bright light, could suddenly see how dirty he was. Now, I'm not talking about the dirt on his hands, but he says, I'm a sinful man. He suddenly became aware because of how good and holy and loving and powerful Jesus was, he became aware of what he had done wrong. I mean, he certainly was aware of how he was planning to tell Jesus, you're not a fishing expert, leave it to me. But he was aware of the other things he had done wrong. And he knew that, you know, that at times in his life, maybe he'd been selfish, maybe he hadn't told the truth, maybe he'd been greedy, maybe he'd been disobedient. And he suddenly became aware of all these things. And he confessed this to the Lord, and he said, you know, Lord, depart from me. You don't want to be with me. I'm not very good. You want to be far away from me. Except we notice Jesus didn't leave. Jesus knew Peter was sinful. He didn't want to leave. He wanted to stay. And he wanted to then change how Peter was. Now, in our first reading, the prophet Isaiah had this vision, which was his calling to be a prophet. And something similar happened. 
as he saw this great vision of the Lord and all the angels, he also became aware in that bright light of the things that were wrong about him, and he said, I am a man of unclean lips surrounded by a people of unclean lips. Like, not only am I bad, everybody around me is bad. We're, what am I doing here? And you remember what it said? The angel, an angel brought, took a burning coal from th what was burning the incense and sacrifice to the Lord, brought that coal, touched Isaiah's lips, and said, now your lips are cleansed. When we become aware that we've done things wrong, we know that there's something that Jesus gives to us so that we can become clean. You know that it begins in second grade, right? In fact, the second graders did this for the first time back in November. First confession, first reconciliation. And starting then, you do it again and again. And I recommend to everybody you do it once a month. If you sin seriously, do it right away. Let that cleansing happen. Now, you're not going to be touched with a hot coal. That's not going to happen in that sacrament. But our Lord Jesus will wash you clean. Peter became aware of his sinfulness, but Jesus didn't want to stomp him down and make him feel bad. Instead, Peter then became aware that he was going to need a lot more strength, a lot more power, a lot more love than he had in himself. He knew he wasn't up to the task that Jesus was about to ask him to do, and thus he became open to receiving the power that he needed from Jesus. He became open to receiving grace. God's grace. What do we mean by that? When we say the word grace. Grace is a gift. God gives it freely. We don't earn it, but we do have to receive it. Right? You can refuse a gift. No, I don't want to get my birthday present. No, don't give it to me. You wouldn't say that, would you? You'd put your hands. To receive it, this gift. And the gift that Jesus gives, the grace, it, grace is a share in his own divine life. It's not just teaching, it's not just a commandment, as important as those are, this is more. It's power, it's energy, it's something that strengthens us, it's something that actually changes and transforms us. When Jesus gives us his grace. Peter received Jesus' grace. Isaiah received Jesus' grace. St. Paul, we heard in the second reading, talking about this. He also had experienced a great change. He says, God's grace has been effective. God's grace has made me what I am. At that point, a great apostle. Not where he started out. He was completely different. He was persecuting the church of God. Punishing, dragging people off to prison. By God's grace, he had become a great apostle. Peter and the others, they recognized their sinfulness. This made them open to receive God's grace. So Jesus got into Peter's boat did amazing things. Peter realized he was sinful, and then he started to receive Jesus' grace. The third thing is Jesus then had an invitation. He had a call. He had a mission that he now wanted Peter to do. He said to him, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. Wait, Peter was a fisherman. He had been catching Fish, right? That was his job. She says, you'll be catching men. It doesn't mean you're going to go out and find people and like pull them into a net and serve them on somebody's dinner plate. No. You're going to go and find people, bring them the good news, help them to know about me, Jesus, change their lives. That's going to be your job. You're going to be catching people. Wow. Complete change of life. And we heard at the end there, when they brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. In other words, Peter and his, his partners, his work partners, they were done. They were done being fishermen. From now on, their lives changed, and they were going to be following Jesus as his disciples. And many of them he would choose as his 12 apostles later on. You and I experience meeting Jesus. And especially those of you who are students, you have received baptism. Jesus united himself to you in baptism. Many of you soon will receive confirmation. Many of you received our Lord Jesus giving himself to you in Holy Communion. You hear his word. You spend time with him in prayer. It may be that in the future, and for you adults, it may be in the past, 
that in addition to all these things, there may have been a special moment, or there may be a special moment in the future, where you become even more aware of it in a surprising way that Jesus shows up right there in your life. It might happen in a class where you're learning something. It might happen while you're serving somebody. It might happen just in the course of your daily life. You're at work, you're at school. And somehow, Jesus makes himself very real and very present to you, and suddenly everything is different. And Jesus offers, it, offers you his grace, and he'll ask you to do something. What will he ask you to do? It might be that like St. Peter and St. Paul and the prophet Isaiah, all three of the ones we hear about today, it might be that he asks you to let go of all the plans you have had for your life. Because you, if you're a student, or you, if you're a single young adult, you might have plans you've had for your life. I'm going to do this job. I'm going to live in this place. I'm going to have this family. I'm going to do these things for fun. And Jesus might say to you, I want you to do something entirely different. I want you to set all of that aside because I've got a mission for you like I had for St. Peter and St. Paul and Isaiah. I've got something for you to do. And you might experience him saying to you, I want you to live out your Christian life, not that way, but in a religious community, a religious order, like the Franciscans or the Jesuits or the Dominicans. I want you to become a nun or a religious sister. I want you to become a monk or a religious brother. Or he might say to you, I want you to become a priest. I want you to set all those plans aside and do something completely different, all for me. You might say that. But he might not say that. He might be saying something else. He might be saying, yes, you're going to live out the life you have in mind, but you're going to do it differently. You'll become a husband and father. You'll become a wife and mother, but you're going to do it differently because you'll know that your spouse and your children don't belong to you. They belong to me. They belong to God. And I called them, and you're going to serve them with great love for me. And you're going to go to your job and to your school, but you're going to do it differently because you know that every single person around you, also I created my own image and likeness, and they belong to me. And I love them. And like I wanted Isaiah to carry my message, I want you to carry my message. They haven't heard it. And there's moments where I'm going to want you to tell them. Like St. Peter, I want you to bring them the good news. Help them to get to know me. I'm going to want you to do it differently. Just like them. Now we know that Jesus is going to force you to do it. You have freedom. But it's what he asks. It's what he invites. It's what he calls you to do. And the question will be, what are you going to do when he says that? When he invites you to this different way of living. Maybe entirely different. Or maybe partly different doing all these ordinary things but for him. But you'll have a choice. What are you going to say? You're going to say, well, Jesus, thanks, but no thanks. I want you to stay in the little box I have for you. Just stay in there. No more. Or will you be willing to say like the prophet Isaiah? Here I am. Send me. I'll do it. I'll do what you're asking. Jesus invited Peter to do something extraordinary. I mean, you and I be ready to do that. When he says it, to put out into deep water and let our nets down for a catch. Because we know what happened when Peter said yes. Jesus did something extraordinary. He'll do something extraordinary for you and me as well.